Is there a better way to start a moto vlog than with a cold start? I don't think so, but if you disagree, let me know in the comments below. Ooh, and she looks good with those NRC turn signals. Very nice. Hi, I'm Chad, and welcome to another Moto Vlog. It's a beautiful day out here in Southern California, and I decided I wanted to go out on a quick little ride and share a story with you. We call this story time. And today I am going to tell you the story of how I got into motorcycles. So I did not grow up around motorcycles or riding. I actually didn't ride any type of a motorized cycle until I was 19 years old. The first bike I ever rode was a little Yamaha 125cc dirt bike on my good friend Brett's dad's property out in the desert. Just put it around in the dirt, went no faster than probably 15 or 20 miles per hour, but had a gearbox and a clutch. And being that I'd been driving manual transmissions in cars for about three years at that point, picked it up pretty quickly and really enjoyed it and had a good time. But that is not where the story begins. This actually begins with me learning how to drive a car. Before I was 16 years old, I had absolutely no interest in cars, motorcycles, any kind of motor vehicles whatsoever, except from a functionality standpoint. I grew up skateboarding. That was my passion and obsession when I was a teenager and in my preteen years. And naturally, the only purpose that I saw for a car when I was coming of driving age was getting myself and my friends to cool places to skate. Once I got my learner's permit and started learning how to drive in my mom's 2007 Chrysler Pacifica front wheel drive crossover SUV thing, I quickly grew to really enjoy the connection of man and machine. I know that might sound silly with a crossover, but I really just enjoyed it. Feeling like you were in control of a ride, the steering, the throttle, the brakes. I really liked the feeling a lot. And for the first time in my life, I think I could see the value of performance cars other than the aesthetic pleasure. So as I learned to drive, little Tuono V4 goodness for you right there. But as I learned to drive, I grew to love the feeling more and more and more. And eventually, when I was shopping for my first car, I was like, I need something that's gonna be fun to drive and has a manual transmission because I should probably figure that out if I'm gonna drive sports cars. So I got my first car, a 2003 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS with a five-speed manual. Learned how to drive stick with it. Learned some very basic car control principles. Never took it to the racetrack. Only explored a canyon road a handful of times with it. But I learned a lot noting that car. And one of the things that I learned was at the point in my life when I owned that car, I could not afford a sports car. A real sports car. Something with rear wheel drive and some power. But being that I had found this passion for cars, I started getting into motorsports and taking again a further interest in performance cars and why they did the things that they did and had the equipment that they had. The goal of the performance. I became an avid Formula One fan following the 2011, 12, and 13 seasons very closely. And through that, I grew to have even more of an appreciation for all of the technology that goes into motorsport. I came to really love those super high revving screamy engines that just made a ton of horsepower. I loved the sounds that they made. And again, just really started to develop an appreciation for all of the engineering that goes into performance machines. But circling back to my earlier statement, I didn't have any money. And I really wanted to experience these sorts of performance machines. So one day, I was 18 years old, it was my first semester at community college. I saw somebody ride in on an SV650, and I thought, that's pretty cool. 
you know, sporty looking motorcycle. It was the fared version, had clip-ons, and I was like, I could trade my car for one of those. So I started doing some initial research, trying to learn about motorcycles and get a better understanding. And of course, I came to learn that sport bikes, particularly super sport bikes, are slightly watered down racing machines with headlights on them. And to young Chad, that was a pretty amazing prospect, considering anything even remotely close to a race car for the street was hundreds of thousands of dollars. So after doing some research, I decided, you know what, even a 250 would be good. It would solve some issues that I was having with money, like not having enough money to put gas in my car, being a broke college student. And I felt like it would give me a better sense of self and some additional enjoyment in my day-to-day -day life. So one night, I proposed this to my parents at dinner. Mom, Dad, what would you think if I sold my car and bought a Kawasaki Ninja 250. Learned how to ride motorcycles. My parents, particularly my mother, did not like the idea of that. And that's another story for another time. But we worked our way around that eventually. And after a few years of continuing to have this affinity for motorcycles, this passion, learning more and more about them, getting more into the sport of motorcycling. I eventually took the Motorcycle Safety Foundation course, started buying my gear a piece at a time, bought my first helmet for that course, ended up buying gloves and a jacket and armored riding shoes and armored jeans and a back protector not long after that. And by the end of 2013, shortly before turning 21, I had my first motorcycle. And eight years later, here I am on my Aprilia 210 V4 factory, still at it, cruising through the canyons. I've learned a ton, not only just about riding and the motorcycles and the mechanics of them, but also about myself. And it's been an incredible journey that I'm very grateful to have had and has given me a lot of self-fulfillment and meaning. I mean, look at this. Could you imagine any better way to experience the beauty of nature than this? I can't. And then, of course, I've been investing some of my time in trying to learn how to do wheelies. So with that, let's duck into virtual reality real quick so I can show you the tiny bit of progress that I have made on my 210 V4 with this. That was a bigger one. Check it out there though. Close the throttle just a little bit and hit the rear brake. Little floater there for a couple seconds. But yes, in summary, motorcycles captivated me initially because of their incredible engineering and performance, but ultimately just completed me as an individual. And through that, I have made numerous improvements just in myself personally, in the pursuit of being a good person and of going faster and being better than I was yesterday. I absolutely love motorcycles. I love the sport of motorcycles. And I love partaking both in the sport itself and in just the art of riding a motorcycle. There's just something extra special about cruising through nature on a nice road with a great view. 
And of course, there's nothing like going fast, breaking super deep to the apex of a corner, getting your knee down, and coming onto the throttle nice and smooth, and driving out of a corner, and accelerating like a missile. That's great, too. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a gentle little click of the like button, and consider subscribing for more motorcycling content. I post videos like this twice a week. I have my Tuono V4 factory, of course, but I also have a Triumph Daytona 675R race bike that I will be taking to Auto Club Speedway this weekend, so there will be content next week for that. Be sure to check it out. And I also have my trusty Yamaha WR250X Supermoto that I am using for wheelie practice and other hooliganism. Hopefully you can see the mountains and the snow now. Thanks again for watching, and I will hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, later.